2021 WSOU's Election Night Show won the New York Press Club Award for Metro Political Coverage. Now, Election Night is back this Super Tuesday at 8 p.m. for one of the most important dates on the political calendar. Tune in for live results and hear our analysts break down the 2024 presidential election cycle only on 89.5 FM WSOU. Super Tuesday coverage for the election night is still going on here on 89.5 FM WSOU. My name is Liam Harding. Alongside me is Joseph Morales. And Joe, getting into it, we kind of talked about her throughout the night. The quintessential, the last, you know, object many people believe standing between Donald Trump and the Republican nomination, Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley has quite, you know, quite the name to herself. She was a former South, governor of South Carolina from 2011 to 2017. She served as an ambassador to the United Nations from 2007, 2017 to 2018. She was the first Indian American to serve in a presidential cabinet. Uh, she obviously is a Republican Party presidential candidate. And... Um, she won the Washington, D.C. primary just the other day on March the 3rd, becoming the first woman to win a Republican presidential primary in U.S. history. Qu- quite quite the resume there. Speaking of that, she also just won Vermont, uh, winning having 3,684 votes to Donald Trump's 30,469, giving her the majority and seven, 17 delegates received. So, Joe, she just... Making history, trailblazing for a lot of people here, you know, in the world. Yeah, I, I think this shows that she can win a couple of these states and give Trump a run for his money. Now, I don't think it's going to end up in her representing the Republican Party in the general election. But she's showing that she can take away some delegates from Trump. And if she wants to propel this into a future presidential run, it's like in real life, if you run for something, get your face known, get your feet wet. That's what Nikki Haley's doing right now for a future presidential run. Now, yes, she wants to represent the Republican Party in 2024. The chances of that happening, Liam, are pretty unlikely. But she's well-equipped to go on a run in 2028, in 2032, in 2036. She has years. She has experience. In a couple of years, it wouldn't shock me if she's representing the party in the general. Uh, you, you were right there, Joe. As you know, Jorge and Anthony said to start us off in this coverage. You know, looking at a lot of these other candidates not named Donald Trump, like Vivek Ramaswamy and Nikki Haley. They're young. They have some. Yeah, they're getting their names out. They're getting their you know testing the waters, getting their feet wet a little, just so you know they can go on further down the road in their careers in politics to make a run for you know the presidential nominee. But right now, Haley is the only you know real threat or real obstacle for Donald Trump to, you know, get over to get and see, uh, you know, seal the deal and, you know, get the Republican nomination. And although she isn't, you know, getting all the votes and she's not winning a tad bit, she's still getting, you know, 30, 40 percent, which in the grand scheme of things, a lot of people in the Republican Party like that about her. You know, she's getting all these um, this, this voting because it's giving those voice of people who don't identify with Donald Trump, who don't think he should be the candidate to represent their views. Um out there and you know, the, this Reagan, uh, you know, after former President Ronald Reagan, this Reagan group of Republicans, um, who you know might have voted for t- Donald Trump the first two times around, but no, he is not the answer. They see themselves with uh, Nick, Nikki Haley. Here's the funny thing, Liam. I think there's a good majority of Republicans in 2024 that don't align as Trump Republicans. I think there's a big majority that identify in that realm of traditional Republican. And if you aren't a Trump Republican, who is your alternative right now? I don't think Nikki Haley lines up as a traditional Republican. That option is not here right now. I think Ron DeSantis was a good representation of that. Ted Cruz, though he didn't run, that was a good representation of that in 2016. There's a divide in the party. Liam, between Trump Republicans and traditional conservatives. And if that isn't healed before November, then Joe Biden is elected into a second term. If Trump Republicans and traditional Republicans can come together like they did in 2016, then Donald Trump will be president in November. Now, will that happen, Liam? I'm starting to think, yes, it will, because Nikki Haley is not polling right. She's not polling positively. And 
the opposition to Donald Trump within his own party dropped out very early, before Super Tuesday. I'm trying to think back to 2016. Ted Cruz was in it during Super Tuesday. John Kasich held on for a while. I'm trying to remember some other Republican candidates that year. But those are the two that stick out to me. Marco Rubio was around. I'm not sure if he dropped out before Super Tuesday. But there were more options in 2016. Now, are you going to tell me that Republicans are favoring the Trump style of, of conservatism. Yes, I think the movement is started and it's, and it's bigger than where it was before Trump was elected. But I still do think there's a strong base of traditional Republicans that have wanted to give Trump a run for his money. But the candidate isn't there this year. So they're settling for Donald Trump in a general election against Joe Biden. Yeah, no, you, you're definitely right there, Joe. I definitely see, you know, the the movement shifting in a way to reflect more towards uh, Donald Trump. But for more of these traditional conservatives, like, you know, they kind of coined themselves the term of a Reagan Republican, per se. Think about, you know, former President Ronald Reagan and during his time, you know, trying to get elected. Um there isn't that option. That's what Nikki Haley is being used for. It's uh, in all of these articles I read while preparing for this. Uh, they they said Haley represents gives them that voice because they don't necessarily see themselves aligning with Trump's values as president, but they all don't want to you know completely turn their backs away from the Republican Party. And that's the basis that Nikki Haley is trying to run on. It's clearly not working, and people clearly aren't responding to it. But she's trying to be the alternate voice from Trump. She's trying to be the opposition, and she's trying to say, if you don't align politically within the Republican Party with Donald Trump, I'm your option. But clearly that isn't working, Ryan. Uh, Liam. It didn't work in 2016. Now, Ted Cruz tried. Ted Cruz was Trump's biggest opposition in 2016, in the primaries at least. It didn't work then. It's not working now. Have we really shifted to a full-on... Is Let me rephrase that. Is the Trump style of conservatism the new style of conservatism? Is it a younger, more passionate style of conservatism? Like, I, tr- I compare this back in 2020 and before that 2016 with an AOC type of the Democratic side. That is my comparison to a Trump Republican. It's a little more extreme than traditionalists. And the Joe Biden type of the Democrats is more aligned with a Ted Cruz or a John Kasich or a Nikki Haley. That's more traditional. But the parties have started to drift so far apart that they're so extreme nowadays, Liam. For right or for wrong, they are so far apart ideologically. And that's how you have a Trump Republican, and that's why the Democratic Party is shifting in favor of an AOC or an Ehad Omar. It's going that way. So that's where the divide is happening within the party. It just it's just like evolution, you know, with everything. Absolutely. You know, animals evolve. For right or for wrong. Well, exactly. You're saying you say, Joe. I you know the thing with Nikki Haley though, unlike Ted Cruz, who you've just you know uh, mentioned quite a few times, she she chose like an alternative approach. Um, when coming to campaign, unlike you know Rob DeSantis, you know Ted Cruz and Bass and all these other um, former ca- candidates, she never targeted tr- Trump, you know, directly. Right. It wasn't until you know more recently when it became you know the two of them are the only real options. They're only competing against each other now. And she said that from the beginning, she wasn't going to go and direct herself at Trump until it's just the two of them and the rest of the candidates bowed out. So that's that's a different approach because she hasn't really gone in said anything she said things about donald trump but it wasn't anything like 100 percent negative it wasn't necessarily directed solely at him it was like a grand scheme of things and she at the same time does say you know she will support him if you know she she loses but in the end of the at the end of the day i think that's what brought nikki haley's camp one of the reasons that brought nikki haley's campaign down the only way a republican aside from donald trump was going to represent the party is if they went for his legs liam you had to go for him quickly and you had to go for him early you had to shut that down and the republicans just couldn't and that's why donald trump is going to represent the party now i know nikki haley wanted to take i'm gonna use coach the high road she tried to but that is not the style of approach that she should have taken if she wanted to be taken more seriously in the primaries, Liam. Well, in my opinion. Well, we'll have to agree to disagree because <laughs> I feel like a lot of these other um, candidates who have targeted him and tried taking him out of his legs, as you said, have failed because all his energy and all his you know efforts is focused solely on taking those people down. Whereas you know Nikki Haley was able to you know 
get that old school kind of conservative, the Ronald Reagan conservative per se, to get become donors. And you know, she was starting to you know be able to put her name out there. So as you alluded to beginning at the beginning of this, she may not win. She not she definitely she's definitely not, not she's not going to get the nomination, most likely. Unless things start, you know, turning her way. However, this is like setting the stage for her in, you know, in 28, 20, you know, 2032, all these years looking down the line. And I also think, Liam, that Republicans who are fed up with the Biden administration, who, who look at all the flaws in the administration, like we talked about earlier with the pros and cons, Liam, they look at that and they ask themselves, who has a better chance of beating Joe Biden in a general election? Donald Trump or Nikki Haley. Now, both of them have not proven to beat Joe Biden. Donald Trump loses. Nikki Haley never got her opportunity. But they asked themselves, who is the stronger, and I want to call him politician, the stronger representative of my party who can take down Joe Biden? And the Republican Party spoke and they found that Nikki Haley was not the strongest one to take down Joe Biden in election. Yeah, uh, I exactly. I see what you're saying there, Joe. Especially in the grand scheme of things. But now, as we as you were talking about how earlier on when we were last on, we talked about you know the pros and cons of Biden's administration, right. looking at his policies per se. It's time I think to compare Nikki Haley and Trump. You know, we've been just saying about their campaign campaign trails, but you know, let's dive into like where do they differ in you know ideologies and these policies? Like starting looking at border crisis and immigration per se. You know. Haley has, you know, backed immigration policies, including a return uh, with Title 42, which was Trump's remain in Mexico policy and increased deportation, which isn't all that, you know, talked about that much. Whereas you look at Donald Trump, his solution is, you know, including the construction of the wall, reinstating remain in Mexico in Title 42 and increased deportations as well. Two things that they both are very similar policies, but again, One's only harped on more than Nikki Haley's. Well, you know what the other thing is, too? People know what they're getting into with Donald Trump. They know what type of border policies and border enforcement they're getting with Donald Trump. And whether you like it or not, he's very passionate about the southern border. And he's going to continue to be. So that's, what, again, not to, to tie this back, it's another reason why people are favoring Trump more than Haley. They know what they're getting in Donald Trump. They find that Donald Trump is stronger on immigration, on economic policies, and foreign affairs than Nikki Haley. And they can back that up by looking at the Trump presidency. They feel that Donald Trump was better with Russia, with North Korea, with the Middle East, that Nikki Haley can be if she's elected. They feel he's better with the economics as well. Trump has talked about reopening the pipeline. He's talked about differ or he's talked about different types of energy usage than what Joe Biden's doing right now. All of that stuff can be backed up by what he did in four years. So that's the di- that's the main difference between Trump and Nikki Haley here. It's interesting that when you you mentioned these policies, you know the first ones you mentioned are border crisis, and immigration, these the wars going on in Ukraine and uh, Ru- Ukraine and Russia, Palestine and Israel. But one thing you didn't mention that's you know in America that especially with almost like our demographic of voters is gun gun control. And shockingly enough, it seems like Donald Trump has is more you know the aggressor in terms of having stricter gun laws. Haley has spoken out. Um, about it, but you know, she in, in terms of like school shootings, she has just said, "Let's get more metal detectors and increase mental health care," as opposed to gun control. Whereas Trump has, you know, not explicitly said anything, any no specifics on his gun control policies. However, he did tell the NRA that um, nobody would come for their gun guns under his watch, and then you know, told Iowa residents that after a school shooting, that they just need to get over it. So, it's you know, a tale of two stories per se. This goes back to Trump. If you didn't know this, Donald Trump was not always a Republican. He was a Democrat for a while. He was an independent before that. And one of the things he had to overcome in 2016 was prove to the traditional Republican that he can be right-leaning. But you're not going to change a man what he truly thinks. Donald Trump does not... Or let me rephrase that. Donald Trump is not as passionate about the Second Amendment than Nikki Haley is or more traditional right-wing Republicans. So he's going to 
favor that a little more than Nikki Haley has. That's where those differ, Liam, in my opinion. Nikki Haley is a little stronger on the rights of the people to use their Second Amendment right. Donald Trump is a little more... I want to call him left leaning on that, but he's more towards he's more of a centrist on that topic, in my opinion. Yeah. So again, you know, both under the Republican umbrella, but you know, vastly different in some of these policies, um, in terms of as we just mentioned, gun control, immigration laws, you know, all sorts of serious topics like that. But then, you know, in less serious, not as less serious, everything, all these policies are very serious for the future of this country, the future of, you know, all f- future voters, but. One of them that people kind of, you know, throw to the wayside is education. And, you know, Donald Trump has stated that he would shut down the Department of Ed and defer policies to the states, um, you know, get rid of he's been opposed to critical race theory in schools. And then through college level subject is not part of K through 12 curriculums. He wants, you know, all these all these different things for education and just getting rid of that department, whereas Haley has you know, spoken in support of giving parents more say in how schools are run and promised to reduce the size of the Department of Education. She still wants it to be that governing body. So do you think um, in the future, you know, with these stances she has, is it going to make it these races for these other candidates something to look forward to? You know, is that going to be like, you know. A defining thing is these minuscule topics that kind of you know get thrown to the wayside, or do you think it's just going to continue to be those main topics like gun control, immigration, border control, all that sort of stuff? Education is always going to come up, and it's an interesting subject too, because excuse me, education. Yeah, did I say immigration or education? I you said to, education. I meant to say education. If I did say immigration, education is always going to be a an issue with the states and how they decide to run education. Now the government does have some say, yes, but the school boards and the, and the school and the school districts at the state level are going to have a more a more of a say than the federal government does. Now, if states can bring that power and make it more of a local government issue, then you're right, Liam, where they don't have to worry about it as much, and they're going to focus on the bigger issues. But education still is a very important issue, Liam, and it's going to be talked about until. It's figured out, especially um, when it comes to schools that don't have as good of reading levels, graduation uh, rates. Schools like that are going to be put under the microscope and talked about on a national level when it comes to education. Now, we've talked about you know these policies and the importance of them, the crux of them, especially you know again, Joe. Just the, the whole immigration border control has almost been. The center, especially in terms of how vocal Donald Trump has been about it, especially before he got in office, when he was in office, and most certainly now, as we mentioned earlier, with the rise of 8.2 million uh, illegal immigrants, undocumented immigrants. Do you think because of how vocal Donald Trump's been with issues like that for so long, um, compared to that Nikki Haley, who I feel like many of us, including myself, kind of just heard of when it came to this election area is that why donald trump voters um go towards him more than her or do you think there's like any other underlining issue that it could be no i i i I think it sticks with trump there liam he's more passionate when it comes to issues like that and again that's what i was saying before they know what they're getting with donald trump which plays against nikki haley like looking back on it, Nikki Haley was at already a huge disadvantage against Trump because Trump had four years under his belt and could tell the American people, hey, here's what I did in four years, and here's what I can continue to do in the next four. That's what that goes back to, Liam. It's, it's an issue of one person has, has experience and the other person doesn't, and people are going to tend to side with a person with experience because it's a given and they know what they're getting from them. Yeah, that definitely is a big factor in terms of, you know, knowing what you get. You know, one thing, you know, is the common conception with uh, politicians is that, you know, they're going to say one thing. They're good at shaking hands and kissing babies. But, you know, the minute they get in office, you know, sometimes those first hundred days, you, you learn the truth real quickly about these important policies. So someone that like Donald Trump, who is in your face, who says what he means and acts on it is definitely something there. But I think another area of emphasis on why some of these Trump voters aren't really aligning with Nikki Haley and her ideology is just almost that people have been calling her almost two faced per se because of how she, um, like other uh, candidates, go about certain things. She'll say one thing about you know stance on something and then go back on it, especially when she talks about her you know uh, heritage. You know she is the daughter of Indian immigrants. 
And, you know, that has been a main focal point in her career, a main focal point of, you know, her, her political platform. But at times, in, you know, on the campaign trail, she'd be like, it's not that big emphasis of me um, in terms of racism when she'd be like, hey, I don't want there was an article and they said that she there's a quoted from her saying, I don't want, uh, you know, people of color, you know, children of color to feel like that there is racism, racism in this country. Uh, you know, as I was, I grew up without feeling that sense of racism. And then a few days later, she then, you know, turns it around, talks about how children need to realize this. And racism is a quintessential part of what America is and needs to change. It's in the essence of America, but needs to change. So again, people have been saying that because of that, like, I wouldn't say two faced, even though I said that before. You know the the, the easy, how easy it is for for her to flip the script script per se um, has been something that's kind of you know deterred uh, Trump supporters from jumping ship to her. Absolutely, the American people hear everything, Liam, especially during an election cycle. Everything you say, as they say in the court of law, everything you say will be used against you. Everything it's under a microscope, especially in today's day and age, with Twitter, with twenty four hour news coverage. Everything you say as a major political candidate in a presidential year will be taken and used against you. So Nikki Haley, again, she's not going to win this year. If she runs in 28 or 32, she needs to take these lessons, pocket them, and fix the problems that she has in the future years. Because you're under a microscope, Liam. You can't say whatever you want. People are going to hear it, and they're going to use it against you. That's something Nikki Haley's got to clean up. Exactly right there, Joe. You're listening to Super Tuesday coverage on 89.5 FM WSOU. And right before we wrap up this segment, Joe, just one last thing for you. Do you think there are any viable Republican candidates that, you know, could be used? Or is it, as we kept kind of talking about throughout this whole little segment, that this is going to be a 2832 type of issue, that there's no one that can stand up to Trump right now. This year, no. But Donald Trump has a big say in what the future of this party looks like, I think, by picking his vice president. If he picks a young vice president that is favored by the people, that's why a, a Vivek is, is an interesting choice for him. Because I think Vivek I think Vivek's going to be president one day, to be completely honest with Liam. If he takes him as a vice president, and can stick through them, unlike what he did with Pence. Those two don't seem to like each other anymore. But if they could stick through it, Liam, the future of the Republican Party can go whichever way Donald Trump says it does. So he has a very important decision to make with his vice presidential candidate. I agree with you, Joe. I don't think there is anyone right now, Nikki Haley, Vivek, you know, Robert Kennedy Jr. I don't think there's anyone right now that can stand up to Donald Trump and it'll be something for 28 or 32. But the vice president is going to be something quite important for this campaign and for the future of the Republican Party. That'll do it for Joe and I on this quick little segment. But stay tuned to 89.5 FM WSOU as the Super Tuesday coverage will continue after this short break. 